There are two types of amino assays that you need to know for this week's lab, the sandwich ELISA and the solid phase competitive ELISA. The three requirements for these assays are pure hormone, antibody to bind the hormone, and a method for quantifying the data. Remember that antigens trigger the synthesis of antibodies by lymphocytes and that each antibody will bind to a specific antigen. In order to obtain antibodies for an immunoassay, the animal used for testing needs to be injected with a hormone or hormone protein conjugate. Over a period of time, the animal's lymphocytes will create antibodies against the hormone. After that time, collect the blood, allow it to clot, and then centrifuge it to collect the antiserum. Now we'll talk through how to perform a sandwich ELISA using the example of human growth hormone. First, coat the wells of the microwell plates, like the ones we saw in an earlier picture, with an antibody against HGH. Then add the HGH, or serum samples that were collected from patients. Incubate so that the HGH binds to the antibody, and then wash. Afterwards, add the antibody that is coupled with horseradish peroxidase, which helps amplify weak signals. Add the HRP substrate, tetramethylbenzidine, which causes a yellow product to be made. The more yellow product, the more HRP and protein present. After that, use a microplate reader to detect the absorbance and construct a standard curve to determine the concentrations in the patient's serum. Let's compare that process to the solid phase competitive ELISA using cortisol as the example hormone. Start by coating the wells of the microwell plate with the anti-cortisol antibody. The cortisol in the sample will compete for the binding sites with a cortisol HRP conjugate. Wash and then add the TMB for it to oxidize with the HRP to produce the yellow product. So the results of this assay will actually be the opposite from the sandwich assay. The higher the cortisol, the lighter the color. We'll also take a look at the standard curve of this one and we'll see that it is the opposite of the last standard curve we saw. These assays are important clinically because endocrinologists use them to diagnose endocrine diseases. In lab, you will be looking at lab results from seven patients who have one of the following endocrine problems.